Hello, today's lesson is on 2.4 Big Ideas Math. It's about adding and subtracting decimals. And so one of the things that we want to make sure that we understand when we read decimal numbers is that the place value in the decimal after, after the decimal, we call these tenths. And so the order is, let me get my pointer back, these are the tenths, these are the hundreds, and these are the thousandths, right? So I'm going to go to the left of the decimal and then to the right. So these are, I'm just going to abbreviate, these are hundreds, these are tens, these are ones. Now we don't have ones after the decimal, but we have tenths. So I'm going to do a lowercase t, and this would be hundreds, and this would be thousands. Okay, with a THS, right? So when we add and subtract decimals, we add the same place values together, just like when we do whole numbers. So this digit 4, right, it is in the tenths place. I was going to do all the decimals first. So I noticed this is the tenths place. And then down here, this 4 is in the hundredths place. And it ends in THS. And then this 4 is in the thousandths place. So our place value gets smaller in the direction that going to the right. Numbers get smaller by a power of 10, but they get bigger by a power of 10 going left. And this 4 is in the tens place, and this 4 is in the ones place. So that's just a basic review of place value. Okay, so now the, the idea of the value in place value is to tell us what value a digit has. Right, so I'm going to move this, right? So how do we say this number? Well, when we say it out loud, right, this is what we say. We say 333. Actually, a little typo in there. It's actually supposed to be a dash. So I'm going to go back and put the dash in. Okay. And then I just got rid of that. So let's just put that back for right now. Okay, so this is 333. And then when I ask you what it represents, we look at, well, oh my gosh, so here's a place value picture of what 333 looks like. Notice you probably did this in third or fourth grade where you took um, the um, place value of something. So this these are 100s, and in this number 300, I have three 100 pieces, right? So these are 10 frames, and 10 times 10 is 100. So this represents 3 times 100. This number in the middle is in the tens place. This represents 3 times 10. And over here, I have the ones, which is 3 times 1. This is called expanded form, and we used to make you do this, right, so that you understood the, the value that goes with the place that the number is in. Okay, next. So here's another. Oh my gosh, it's the same digits, but now I've turned it into a decimal, right? So how do we say this number? This number is 33 and 3 tenths. So just like I want to show you, if I was in fraction land like we just were, if I wrote 33 and 3 tenths, it looks like that. So these are now the same value, but written a different way. So when we start looking at decimals, we say the and for the decimal point, just like we would say the and for a mixed number. And what does this number represent? Well, if now it represents 33 whole numbers. I have three groups of 10. Sorry about that. It's not liking that. And then I have three groups of one whole. But now I have to come up with some teeny tiny things that represent tenths. But I also have three of them. So notice I still have the same numbers. It's just that the value of the number is changing. All right, so let's go one more. Um, this is an example of a place value chart that I'm sure you're familiar with. And what I want you to do is write down the words that go with the numbers. So it helps sometimes if you put a number into the chart. And I sometimes will work backwards, like this is 893. So I start here with the ones place, 89321. I do that so I don't make a mistake and put the number in the wrong place. So the way I say this number is, right, I say this group first. I say it's 12,398. 
So the way we write that is 12,398. Now this number here, I'm going to put in the chart. I'm going to start with the four in the ones place, and then it's four, five, two. So when I see the decimal point, I say and. So to say this number, I say four and. Now this is what's kind of weird. I say this all together as if there wasn't a decimal, and it is 452. But then I say the place value that goes with it. So this is four and. 452 thousands. Now, nobody ever says that, right? There it is, four and 452 thousands. What a lot of people say is 4.452, but what they really mean is four and 452 thousands. Just takes some practice to get used to saying it that way. Okay, so most important thing to do when adding and subtracting decimal numbers is to line up the place values. You can't add numbers together if they don't have the same place value. So what I would do is I would add the 6.5. I'm going to add the, notice that the 13, the decimal goes here. So if I was lining up these three numbers to add, I would put 13.0. And then this last number is 0.5. Two, seven. Now, if I want to add the numbers together, it makes sense to put in, I call these ghost zeros because they're there even though you don't see them. And I don't put any ghost zeros to the left here, but I totally could, right? Nothing's wrong with doing that. And now that I have the decimals lined up, that means I have all of my place values lined up and I can just add down the list of numbers and I get 19 and 77 hundredths. And why is it important to line up the decimals? Because you're keeping the same numbers together. Just like if you were counting a bunch of money, you would probably put all the 20s together, right? All the fives together. It's kind of what we do when we play Monopoly. That's what we do um, when we do mental math with whole numbers. And that's what we're going to keep doing with decimals. All right, so here we go. Here's an example of a subtraction problem that's 89.9 minus 46.78. And what I want to do is I want to line up the place value. And notice, um, sometimes we give this a fancy word and we call it annexing a zero. When you annex something, you've added it. So when I annex a zero, I add in my ghost zero because remember, I need to take eight away from something. If I don't have a number there, I might make a mistake and just think it's just an eight, but it's not because I'm trying to subtract. So I go backwards, right? And I say, can I subtract four from eight? Yes, six from nine. Okay, it all looks good except for this. These are the hundredths place. So I'm gonna go to the left and I'm gonna regroup the nine and it becomes an eight. When I do that, I cash it in for 10 of these. Um, these are hundredths place, right? Okay. So now I can subtract 10 minus 8 is 2, 8 minus 7 is 1. The decimal, I just bring it down where it is. 9 minus 6 is 3, and 8 minus 4 is 4. So it's just like adding and subtracting with whole numbers, um, but I have a decimal in place. Okay, so these are some OYOs. So I want you to try these OYOs and then unpause the video. Okay. So I'm going to show you, right, the first thing to do is make sure you line up the zeros and if you, I mean, sorry, line up the decimals and then you annex a zero if you don't have one because you want to make sure that you're doing the subtracting in the right order. And then the final answer looks like that. I can show you the regrouping. Um, let's see, this became a, let's see, what did I do? Oh, this is adding. That was silly. Uh, regroup the one there. Okay, the second one is also adding. Line up the decimals. Oh, look, this time I had to annex two zeros, right? Um, and then there is regrouping right there. Okay, when I'm subtracting, again, I just line up the decimals. I add as many zeros as I need so that I can do the subtraction. So here we go. I'm going to show you the regrouping. Uh, let's see, this seven becomes a six. This would become 19. And then I need to regroup. This becomes 18. This becomes 10, but I'm regrouping because I need to get all the way over to the right-hand side in my regrouping. So I cross the 10 off and it becomes a 9. 
10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 0. Now you can see everything matches. Okay, the last one. There's three numbers in the top, and there's only two in the bottom, so I'm going to annex a zero in the bottom. And there we go, and I'll show you the regrouping. This becomes 7, this becomes 16, I cross that off, and that becomes a 12. If you can, if the smaller, if the bottom number is smaller, you don't need to regroup, right? It's just when the bottom number is bigger than the top number, that's when you need to regroup. Okay. Last thing I want to show you is just a word problem. Let's say you've gone to the, the mall and you have a meal that costs $7.60. And then your friend had a meal that cost $6.75. And you pay for both of them with a $20 bill. So the question is, how much change do you receive, right? So I could take the 20 and subtract one of these numbers at a time, or I could decide to add the 760 plus the 675, figure out what my total is from the cost of the food, right? And then 13, so the food costs 1435, and the $20 bill looks like this. And when I subtract the food total from the $20, we'll figure out how much change we get back. So I'm going to regroup the two. This becomes 10. 10 becomes 9, which then the next number that I regroup is 10. I regroup that. And I've got 10 minus 5, 9 minus 3, 9 minus 4. I would get $5.65 change. Okay, that's it. Good luck on the homework.